What a beautiful day it is to talk sports, and thanks for joining us on the show today. I am Udoka Njoko, and I've got Ekene Ezeji on the show this morning. Remember, this is Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa, and we'll be touching on tennis. And of course, that the story is on five-time Grand Slam champion Mara Sharapova. But first, let me welcome Ekene on the show. Welcome. Yeah, pleasure as always. Mm. Are you happy with um, the news on Sharapova retiring? I'm not sure if I'll say I'm happy because mm. it's always good to have good tennis players on the circuit. Mm. Um, but I think I understand. Uh, I was trying to do a comparison between her and Venus Williams and why Venus is still on the circuit and yeah. she has opted out because from what we understand, it's due to in, you know the pains from her shoulder. She can't bear it any longer. Yes, she's 32. Venus too, apparently, you know, down to the Sjogren's yeah. uh, syndrome, is suffering pain as well. Um, but you know, each person has to determine what it is they, they've set as their target. And I mm. think for her, she wants to go out without having to drop mm. or be remembered as someone whose standard has dropped. Mm. Whereas, I mean, Venus loves the game and doesn't really mind too much mm. what people think about her. All right, talking about Amara Sharapova, she has retired from tennis at the age of 32 following a shoulder uh, injury. And uh, for Sharapova, the Russian lives as one of only 10 women to have, won, to have won each of the sport's four Grand Slam titles. And as a former world number one who made a huge impact on both the sports and the celebrity world. And the Russian won her first Grand Slam at Wimbledon in 2004, age 17. And in 2016, she tested positive for banned substance meldonium at the Australian Open. And she was initially banned for two years before the ban was reduced to um, about 15 months after an appeal. Now, looking at um, Sharapova's career, would you also say that one of the reasons why she had to retire was because of the, apart from the injuries now, you know, when she came back from uh, the ban, uh, she's been finding it difficult to to be up to par with what we used to know her for uh, winning most of these uh, Grand Slam titles. Yeah, no, doubtless that ban affected her. And, mm. um, even her, her ability to compete without feeling somehow jaded by it. Mm. Um, I think I've always said tennis is a very mental game. So in spite of everything, when you go in there, you need to be able to focus on what you're doing. Like if you get that impression that people feel somehow they're looking at you as the bad guy. It's hard somehow, even mm -hmm. though she seems to give the impression that she's not there to make friends. She wrote in her autobiography that this yeah. is her battlefield, she's not here sure. to make friends. But you, you, know, you still get that feeling that she wants to be liked. After mm -hmm. all, she has a brand. Um, so doubtless, you, know, we, you can chart a, a downturn from the time she went out for the ban. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. Well, looking at um, um, her ban now, comparing her to the achievement of uh, Venus Williams and Serena Williams, and the time we talked about the older ones, quitting the scene for the younger ones to grow. As that time come, are we going to start seeing <laughs> most of these big, big, the, the legends quit the game? Sharapova has gone down. And I keep, I don't know, you might have something against it, but Venus Williams, I think it is time for her to as well quit <laughs> everybody, the stage. Everybody knows their own time. I'm sorry, I, I don't believe in um, you know, getting rid of the other ones. I feel mm. they're serving a purpose. If, if for no other reason, I mean, Sharapova has an impressive res resume. True. So for people who, even if she was, was there, despite her struggles, people would still look up to her. Mm -hmm. I think it's just down to her ego and how much she can take of seeing people like, you know, uh, Osaka can, maybe even Coco. I don't think she can handle being beaten by Coco, Coco Golf, for example. Yeah. So, you know, she, she does have a bit of a, a, let me call it an ego. So mm. she wouldn't want to stick around and see herself going down. She has a view of herself mm -hmm. and she wants to maintain that view. So I feel everybody knows when their time is right. Mm. If Venus right. is happy, it, it pains me because I'm a real Venus fan. Okay. I was there when she was at the top of her game, you know, the um, the Wimbledon final that she played and, and uh, I think it was, I remember, I probably remember the um, um, American president that said she was playing like a gazelle mm -hmm. on the, oh yeah, What's his name? Obama? Yeah, no, not Obama. Um, he and his wife, but it will come to me anyway. But she was so impressive in her prime that that's what I remember of her. Now to see her struggling and seeing her beaten by people like Coco Goff, it's painful. Mm. But I believe she deserves the right to choose when to step out of the ring. All right, and uh, talking about the younger ones, let's look at uh, American teenager Coco Goff. She has broken into the world's top 50 for the first time, and she's now ranked 49th in the world. And Goff is the first 15-year-old in 15 years to reach the women's top 50. And Goff defeated Venus Williams on her way to reaching the fourth round at Wimbledon in 2019 in her first Grand Slam and uh, for Coco Golf. Uh, she'll be 16 on the 13th of May 2020. I mean, at the age of 15, this young lady has achieved a whole lot. She has. And at the start of um, 2019, I think she was rated in the... 686. Yeah. 
At the end of the year, she was rated 68. That's like 100% And now she's 49 in the world. It's amazing, isn't mm. it? Um, she had to. She, I mean, for me, I, I, I would you really brand her. You can't keep a good girl down because mm -hmm. she's. You see them again. Back to the mental attitude. You see the mental attitude she brings to the game, and that's what struck me the first time I yeah. watched her play against Venus in Wimbledon. That was for me the turning point. And there was a way she managed to stay in the game. You know, despite the fact that it was a big game, she was on centre court, mm. and you know she didn't really know what to expect. But she stayed in the game, even when she dropped her level slightly. She stayed in the game and I think that ability to be almost humble in a sense mm -hmm. and not look too far ahead and stay in the moment that's what seems to be getting her mm -hmm. where she's going and I hope she can maintain that status I hope she doesn't get distracted by the fame now at 15 years do you think by 20 uh, we can now put her in the same not in the same category as um, Serena Williams but can we now say that she's getting to that level where she can be compared to Serena Williams that's when she gets to the age 20. She may even do better than her that's wow. my I mean I, I really feel she's got the she's got the arsenal True. Um, so if she continues mentally the way she is and builds on it because if you look at people like Djokovic what I feel turned the game for him was that mental strength he True. brought to the game. He always had the arsenal, but somehow he didn't believe or he was fighting with himself. Mm. Once he managed to get that mental thing in place, he's almost like, you know, you can't beat him now. Mm. So Coco Goff seems to have the mental thing in place. Yeah. So I'm impressed with her. If she can maintain that, she's a growing child. So mm -hmm. she's bound to, you know, at some point, it's going to dawn on her that she's on the grand stage. True. I hope she'll manage to keep that mental side. I hope her, her trainers are working on that to, you know, be ahead of the game and help her just maintain that mental stamina. Mm. She'll be fine if she can do that. And lastly, some did you see her getting to the number one spot? Of course, she had. Really? A, for me, it's, it's it's inevitable unless mm. you know there's an injury, God forbid, mm -hmm. or something drastic comes to interfere. She's on the right trajectory. Mm. Um, the game is good. You know, you can say I said it, so later you can call me up and okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where she's headed. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Akene, for making it down to the studio this morning. My pleasure.